Hello everyone, I am Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, a lot of times you will see nowadays for SD1 interviews, SD2 interviews, SD3 interviews, system design is something that has been uh, like getting some more attraction nowadays. A lot of companies have started asking system design even for SD1s. For example, if you consider my experience, then I was asked system design in a lot of interviews, including my SD1 interview at Bloomberg, including my SD1 interview at Sprinkler, SD1 interview at LinkedIn and whatnot. And then from SD2 and SD3, definitely you will be asked system design, which covers both the aspect that is the high level design and low level design. A lot of people who are in college or let's say who are actually working in the industry actually are not able to actually understand what are the things that they need to know before they actually land up uh, an interview and are able to give their best shot. A lot of people are actually confused what to learn in system design, what, what order we can learn in system, uh, system design and is there kind of like a roadmap that we can technically follow if we are preparing for our next interview. So if you are somebody who has their next system design interview scheduled, then don't go any further. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about kind of like a structure that you can technically follow in order to make sure that you are able to ace in your system design interview. One interesting fact. This whole roadmap, this whole structure that I'm going to talk about is going to be as it is end to end, step by step taught in our new system design cohort, which is going to be a high level design plus low level design cohort. In this particular cohort, we are going to talk about a lot of interview problems around high level design and low level design both. And everything that we are going to discuss in this particular video for the structure and the roadmap of system design, every single topic we have covered in that particular course. So if you are somebody who are looking for an end to end guided experience and want to learn system design, do check out the course. I'll put the link in the description section below and you can use this particular coupon code to get maximum discount on the platform possible. So without any further delay, let's just start and let's start talking about how you can actually prepare for a system design interview in, um, in the most structured way possible. Okay, so let's start talking about the whole roadmap in detail. Again, mentioning that whatever topics we are going to discuss in this roadmap, we are going to cover everything end to end in our deep dive of system design course, where we are going to cover both the low level design and the high level design. And you can carefully see, I have divided my uh, roadmap as well into two individual parts. One is the low level design, one is the high level design. Okay, let's start talking with respect to the high level design first. So in high level design, you can see the first and the foremost thing that you have to start with is understanding the estimations and calculations that probably if you are working on a good amount of scale, what is the amount of storage that your system will need? How many users you are going to have? What is the QPS and the throughput that you are looking at? Right, you try to understand any kind of a functional and non-functional requirement of the system end to end. Then we'll talk about databases, right? Now, databases is an important aspect and a lot of people actually struggle in understanding the fact that how they can scale the database layer of the whole application, right? Sometimes you need to have your application stateless. Sometimes you need to have your application stateful. How to manage databases in those cases? Apart from that, what are the different types of databases available? Right, RDBMS, what are the different RDBMS available and what, how it is different from NoSQL? What are the options in NoSQL available? Right, uh, you can try to understand that which NoSQL is good for what type of a case and we are also going to talk about that. Then how exactly data replication is going to work, right? How asset compliance you can actually apply on an RDBMS, right? And how you can make transactional capabilities in uh, your databases. For isolation levels also, again, this comes with the transactional capabilities. And then we'll try to understand how you will be able to scale up your databases. Then we'll try to understand what is the concept of sharding. And you should technically try to shard a database and see how exactly you can yourself do sharding and manage the multiple instances, right? We are also going to show you the hands-on demo on exactly how exactly sharding can be done. Then you can try to learn about what's the right database to pick for you. You can try to understand about DynamoDB or Azure Cosmos or Google Spanner, right? In the cohort as well, we are going to pick up one of the databases and try to understand the case study, right? Well, you can also try to understand Cassandra, which is a very important NoSQL database and actually serves a lot of purpose. So having its knowledge in your system design interviews is going to be crucial along with MongoDB as well, right? Post that, you can try to learn about file systems. So a lot of cloud uh, cloud services provide different, different cloud systems. For example, Google Colossus, right? You can try to understand that. And then we can move forward to networking and try to understand different, 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 uh, I would say networking concepts like different pro important protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, or other application layer protocols like let's say torrent, how exactly torrent works, so on and so forth. Then also understand the understanding of, uh, or I would say concepts of DNS, how exactly the hierarchical architecture of DNS actually works, right? How you can actually make a DNS query yourself and see how the packets move. Understand the transport layer, the transport layer protocols and how exactly reliability is actually, um, 
provided in TCP protocol and how exactly UDP protocol is used. What all the, what are the places where UDP protocol can be a better choice for you? Then try to understand load balancers, right? Why load balancer? Why do you need load balancer? What are the types of load balancers? L4 and L7 load balancer. And we'll also try to actually see that how can you set up your own load balancer on maybe uh, AWS using elastic load balancer, or maybe you can use something like Nginx to set up your own load balancer and try to understand how exactly load balancing can be done. Then communication mechanism between services that maybe you can make a REST API, you can use RPCs, you can use GraphQL, what is good, good and what kind of a purpose. And I'll, we will also show you some hands-on demo around that. Then apart from that, for uh, other type of communication, you can try to actually learn about web sockets, long and short polling, what are the use cases for these, so on and so forth, right? Then you should technically try to understand caching, what are the different types of, or I would say different levels of cache that you can act, add to an application, what are the caching solutions that are available, how internally they work, so on and so forth. And then you can move to asynchronous communication, understand exactly, okay, between two microservices, how synchronous communication work, what, where synchronous communication might not work, where you might need synchronous communication. And in case you do not need synchronous communication, then how asynchronous communication can work, how message queues and message brokers actually work. Then a very important uh, technology that is Kafka. What is Kafka? How internals of Kafka works? What are topics in Kafka? What are What is a dead letter queue? All of these important Kafka concepts you should try to learn. And apart from that, try to set up your own, let's say backend server and try to connect it to a Kafka instant, make a couple of topics and see how you can move things here and there. Then there's an uh, alternative solution from Redis as well. That is the Redis queue as well as the Redis real time pops up. What are the use cases where Redis real time pops up can be very useful for you and how it is kind of like for very specific use cases, kind of like very compatible and even sometimes better than Kafka as well. Then for all of these concepts, we will also try to understand that how exactly distributed messaging queues actually work. And then a couple of things around observability and monitoring that how you can set up these, what is content delivery network in what kind of systems CDNs have actually uh, given a very good amount of use cases. Some interesting big data topics like stream processing, Kafka, MapReduce, understanding how you can set up your own data lakes and warehouses, maybe on something like AWS. Interesting design patterns for high-level design that let's say how you can use Saga pattern, how you can use anti-corruption layer, how you can use choreography orchestration, how you can use backend for front end. These are all those design patterns that I myself have actually at some point of time implemented in my full-time engineering career and actually seen the use cases where exactly these can be used. And once you are through with all of these topics, I believe it's a good time to actually expand the knowledge based on problem solving. Try to understand that, okay, okay high, high, how a high level design of a chat system works, how the high level design of a Netflix or let's say um, location services like Uber or Tinder works, how job schedulers work, what is the K heavy hitters, what are the different, different types of problem where K heavy hitters can be useful. Storage solutions like Dropbox, social media feed, ad click platform, right? Designing your code submission platform like lead code and code deployment system as well notification scaling, designing Google Meet kind of software and more. So these are the different, different set of problems that will give you a very wide aspect of how exactly systems are built. And a lot of these problems we are actually also going to discuss in the course. We have actually added all of these problems and we are going to take a very deep dive into understanding these systems. In a few of them, we are also going to bring you some hands-on, I would say coding implementation that you can see and understand how things are actually built. And to understand all of this, I believe some concepts around cloud services, you can pick any cloud service that you like, maybe Azure, AWS or GCP, something you can pick. I have added topics for AWS here, like you can try to understand how to set up EC2 instances, how S3 works, how elastic load balancer works, how virtual private cloud works, how you can set up the whole networking ecosystem, how auto scaling works, how you can actually maintain horizontal scaling using the auto scaling mechanism, how you can have warm instances already ready in your auto scaling systems, right? How exactly machine images work, right? Relational database systems, DynamoDB and a lot, like there are a lot of cloud services that is, that is provided by AWS. We are going to take a deeper dive into a lot of them and do hands-on. This is going to be like a good hands-on part of the course as well. And if you are learning from these yourself, I would highly recommend you guys to try to explore that, but no worries. If you're already the part of the course, we are going to explore all of this. And this will give you a good head start around things around high level design, where you will be able to understand how on a broader perspective on a bird's eye view systems are actually built. Then you can start learning things about low level design. See low level design is all about your coding implementation, clean code practices, writing maintainable and extendable code. So we will start with learning hoops, abstraction, polymorphism, inheritance, composition, why we need one, so on and so forth. Interesting part of the cohort like that, that I mentioned is that we are going to learn the low level design in both uh, Python and Java. Right. So this will give you an idea of type safe language and non-type safe languages as well. Right. Because if you learn with Java, then things like C sharp, things like C plus plus, things like TypeScript 
everything is going to be sorted for python if you will learn with python then things like ruby things like javascript most of the things there will be also sorted then we'll talk about solid principles one of my favorite topics i really love talking about solid principles and i believe if you understand solid principles well you do not need to like remember design patterns you will see a problem see the issues there and will be able to solve using solid principles so single responsibility open close list cost substitution interface segregation dependency inversion all of these solid principles are very important and we're going to learn about that then there is dedicated creational design patterns right these are those design patterns which can help you to actually create your objects in a proper fashion like builder pattern, factory pattern, abstract factory, singleton. And then we are, we are going to move to structural design patterns where we'll talk about decorator, adapter, facade, proxy, flyweight. And we'll also see some of the applications using these, uh, I would say, design patterns. Then interesting behavioral design pattern like strategy pattern. I really uh, tell everybody that strategy pattern is one of the most important design pattern that you can go for. Iterator pattern, this was the pattern that was asked to me in my Coinbase interview. Observer pattern, making some projects using observer pattern, right? Maybe kind of like a real-time leaderboard or something. Then command pattern, state pattern, making things like ATM machine or elevator system, chain of responsibility, right? All of these design patterns we are going to learn and we'll try to build something out of it so that we can get a good hands-on practice that, okay, what are the situations where these design patterns can be implemented? But just learning design patterns might not be the final solution for you. Why? Because in a lot of companies, there is a machine coding round. In machine coding round, you are expected to build a broader project where you use more than one design patterns. And that's why we have technically kept a dedicated machine coding part as well. So we have two parts, LLD problems and machine coding. These LLD problems are those problems which are going to focus on a single design pattern and will help us to solve the problem using that. Like for example, JSON parser, designing ATM, elevator, logger, parking lot, and so on. And then in machine coding, we will be making kind of like a broader term perspective project like a book my show where, you, where there will be more than one design patterns to be implemented designing a game like chess an e-commerce store a card game something like tic-tac-toe so these are going to be the machine coding problems that we are going to also talk about and i believe you should also try to learn apart from that i, I believe like and i've also added this in the course as an additional module that you should try to understand how exactly concurrency and parallelism work how to manage threads how to work with thread-based infrastructures and how exactly testing works how can you write integration tests unit tests so on and so forth because like overall just not just with respect to interviews as a software engineer the concept of concurrency and testing is extremely important so it makes a lot of sense to actually have deeper dive into these so we are also going to talk about concurrency and testing in our cohort we'll be talking about deadlocks we'll be talking about how exactly semaphores work how exactly logs work a lot of interesting discussion is going to happen and again as i mentioned in both java and python so this is the end-to-end -end roadmap that I wanted to discuss and every single thing that I have mentioned here is going to be covered inside our system design cohort, right? You can actually uh, like explore the cohort. You can check the link in the description section below and get extremely huge amount of details on what all things we have actually added in the cohort. You can also use the coupon code that is mentioned in the same description link and get some massive discounts on the cohort. I'm really excited. It's going to be a hybrid cohort. There is going to be a lot of live classes. There will be some extra reading materials that we are going to give. There will be a lot of assignments, like a lot of systems you're going to build yourself is the assignments. And then you can maybe match the solution and see the trade-offs. An interesting set of things are going to happen. So I hope this overall roadmap was clear to you guys as well. If you have any thoughts or any comments, do let me know in the comment section below. I would be happy to answer all of them. That being said, let's wrap this particular video here. We're going to meet soon in the next set of videos. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Have a great week ahead. I'm Sanket Singh, signing off.